After months of heavy weather, heavy rain at least, rain has finally fallen in parts of New South Wales. Overcoming all the odds, Mara came back from that to become the top investigative journalist on television at least. That would be a fair point. Some people believe that that's someone else. Please welcome News Hub National Correspondent Penny Gow! Do you honestly think that he ever came back from this thing? You say diversity is a weakness. Are you saying we're a weak country? Will you accept the diverse view that women should be stoned for the crime of being raped? Long story short, Gower went into this interview with two touring Canadian YouTube personalities, probably hoping for a gotcha or two to expose those people as the racists that their detractors would have you believe they were. You've got to, you've, you've got to show some respect. He seemed to underestimate his opponents. They walked all over him. Personal politics aside, he didn't do well. He came third. He lost. He looked silly. It wasn't, wasn't good. No, you I'm, asked me a question. Yeah. So yeah, am yeah. I allowed to answer? You, you, you blamed her for not answering a question. Now you're mad at me for answering a question. Do you want to pick a side here? <laughs> Can I let me finish very no, briefly? No. Ten seconds. No, no, Can I no, do ten no, seconds? no, 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 I'm not going to let you finish. Okay. Fair okay, enough. so, so last, just so everyone's no, I'm not, clear, he asked me a question, now he doesn't want me to answer yeah, it. Yeah, I'm not okay. going to let you finish. For Patrick Gower, not his finest moment. Southern, that one, got her name in the headlines a little bit more than him, more famous than him, I guess, I don't know. Since all that went down, he seemed a little consumed by it. And I'll tell you another thing. I'm ready for another go with Stephen Molyneux and Lauren Southern. He's done some documentaries about being on things. Other than that, reinvented himself somewhat. His thing now is that he's the ambassador from the media to the communities affected by the 2019 terrorism in Christchurch. And he's never been especially humble about that. People sometimes say thank you to journalists for covering a story. After Christchurch, Muslims were coming up to me and saying thank you, thank you so much for what you've done for us. There was a revelation of sorts later. The Christchurch terrorist had sent a donation to one of those controversial Speakers. The terrorist donating $138.89 to a podcast and YouTube channel by Molyneux. That was all probably quite satisfying for him. The terrorist was actually interviewed by the commission and he is the one who has brought up that YouTube was actually the source of his inspiration. That's where the government and the world needs to take the fight against white supremacy. His latest documentary, it's on hate, a victory lap of vindication. Since the attack, I have been deeply committed to bringing the victims' stories to the country. He does speak to some victims and survivors, and we do get some insight from them, which is pretty refreshing, considering how much attention went to others in the aftermath. They are us. Yes, so I've... <laughs> Attached to this film uh, to play Jacinda Ardern, yeah, she's such a fascinating character. One person does point out that what they survived is actually a whole lot more complicated than love-hate, a dichotomy. It's fine to hate, it's, it's fine to love. This is beyond hate. This is not a normal hate. And I think Gower should have followed that, but instead he goes off on this YouTube-obsessed narrative, seemingly built around this premise that the people he interviewed in 2018 were responsible for what happened. These are extreme YouTubers. Knowing what's at stake, I actually personally find it distressing to watch this, mm -hmm. knowing what came on March 15th. Yeah. So here he was, obviously up against a network of racists who had a militant wing, and so his dorky interview no longer looked as bad. We should be thankful that he um, did as well as he did. And I think his mind is made up um, as we go off on this journey with him, exploring hate. There was an inappropriate level of focus on our Muslim community, but that ultimately that did not lead to what we saw on March 15. Yet the Christchurch terrorist was inspired by previous white supremacist attacks. Our agency's missing an obvious timeline. Hey, just quickly, I'm not showing the whole thing, I'm just, just some pivotal plot points. He downloaded the manifesto of the Norwegian terrorist who killed 77 people to defend the country from multiculturalism. The following years saw white supremacy extremism on the rise. A Sikh temple, a black church, and mosques were hit by terrorist attacks in the United States, Canada, and the United Kingdom. The rise of Donald Trump amps up the tensions. Donald J. Trump is calling for a total and complete shutdown of Muslims entering the United States. He identifies five later six attacks. A Trump quote happened in there. Not that it makes it okay, but when that quote was said in December 2015, across the world there was a lot going on and rising racial and or religious intolerance probably, you know, it wasn't just the Trump campaign. The explanation of how our intelligence agencies failed continues. The alt-right's popularity surges following Trump's election. 
Nobody identifies what alt-right is. I think it's mostly used interchangeably with far-right, radical-right, nationalist-right, racist-right, authoritarian-right, religious-right, conservative-right, neoconservative-right, hipster-right, right of center right right all the rights. It's associated with internet jokes in, in that frog. The professor steps in to help. I would regard this country as being very naive. Until the 15th of March 2019, we did not realize that white supremacy terrorism was a possibility here. On occasion, I've referred to him as Professor Hindsight. Interestingly enough, we don't have those same groups in New Zealand. I'm thinking about, for example, the anti-Muslim groups or the anti-immigrant groups or the extreme right-wing neo-Nazi groups. And we just don't have those sorts of groups in New Zealand. Year on year, you can see violent incidents, all done by these skinhead and white supremacist groups. I've been talking about these groups and the potential for their ideologies and what they do as activists in this community mm. to be taken more seriously for a very long time. How much of an extreme right is there here? It's not big compared with most countries, but I would guess at the core, 200, 250. Patrick, does the Royal Commission give any indication of how many white supremacists there are in New Zealand? Uh, yes, it says there are 1,700. I reckon Spoonley generally does come across as a nice person. Friends, like us, called him Spoons. I don't go to a mosque often. Like I said, it should be Molotovs. Three years before the attacks, a Christchurch local, a white supremacist, dumps a pig's head at Alnor Mosque. The Muslims gonna love this. Pork is forbidden in Muslim culture. What this guy is just the worst. Nothing better to do than this. He receives an offensive behaviour conviction and an $800 fine. He is unrepentant. That rubbing your hands together thing is something a fictional villain would do. You can't think that you're like kind of doing something honourable. And his van, this always sort of, it sort of bugged me a bit, but maybe not for the reasons it should. I don't get how you can have a fixed price. So that's a neo-Nazi code thing. I don't get how you can have a fixed price like that. Because what about rising costs, inflation and all that? If we'd been awake to the threat of white supremacy terrorism, could we have stopped the terrorist? All things considered, it is possible, I suppose, that he's just using hand sanitizer or something like that. But I think this guy's just a coward. With regard to the Christchurch terrorist... He was not on any watch list. Because he kept his actual plans for the attacks offline, the Royal Commission concluded that the terrorist attack could not have been prevented. But Paparoa, an anonymous research collective, disagrees. The way this scene's set up right, not the first time things get a little arty, stylish, fancy. There were measures that they could have taken to identify the Christchurch terrorist as a threat. The group has investigated several Kiwi white supremacists by scanning their websites and social media, and they say spies could have used the same techniques to find him. That was a scary day at the bird sanctuary. And that one's wearing the wrong pants. On Paparoa, threats of violence should never go unreported. The Christchurch terrorist is not a one-off. If they contributed to stopping a genuine threat, we should be thankful that they are out there. We cannot identify the 27-year-old because of a court order. We'll call him James. He was arrested in March this year after making a series of online posts threatening car bombs at both Christchurch mosques. Did you ever intend to do the things that you said. James has recently pleaded guilty to one charge of threatening to kill and one charge of distributing an objectional publication. But I'm not sure it would be ideal if intelligence agencies were relying on people like this in an outsourcing sort of way. Like, who, who knows what their views are like? Do you, do you reckon they're for prisons or against prisons? Who would know? Who else is on their watch list? Who else is on their watch list? And could their politics prejudice the nature of their scrutiny, which is important because they've got the air of the intelligence agencies. And I think more generally, people who have their own righteousness unchecked can sort of get, you know, a bit carried away. But is it social media itself that created this hate? YouTube recommendations are driven by a complex AI algorithm. The goal is to keep people watching. More views equals more advertising revenue. The algorithm can lead viewers into more extreme points of view. I look up how to jog, and after clicking on a few recommendations, I'm now in the world of hardcore ultra marathons. Before all this, I hadn't heard of hardcore ultra jogging marathons. I guess it's some unhealthy fitness thing. But what kind of vanilla 
jogs are you hoping to see you go on youtube look at where <laughs> well about to head out for a what i call a walk run uh, where i walk up the hills and run uh, the downhill bits this is the bit where you feel fast this bit makes you feel slow oh you're thinking is it him yep it is not just always over. Anyway though, motivation for one to extremely jog and motivation for one to commit violence against people. Not sure it's the most ideal analogy. Again, I haven't looked into it, so maybe it is some sick shit. In 2020, after public criticism, Stefan Molyneux and a number of far-right figures were finally banned from YouTube for violating their hate speech policy. We must make sure we're doing everything we can to prevent people from falling into these extreme radicalised views that lead them to such violence. The Christchurch Call is asking social media to create ethical algorithms. Algorithms that take into account moral values and override the inhuman AI programming. The so-called Christchurch call, this thing that happened in France, may have been seen as ironic by some, considering the history of the two countries, where one has actually terrorised the other on more than one occasion. A proposed hate speech law is creating debate about freedom of expression. It's doubtful this law can have much of an effect on hate speech coming into New Zealand via the internet. And while YouTube may have banned the likes of Molyneux, can we trust the tech companies to control hateful content? Nobody manages to completely pull off an explanation of what hate actually is. It's when it tips into the space of it causing harm to others. There was this time Spoon Lee was asked to define hate speech. The person asking the question requested, don't use hate in the definition, that's not helpful to anyone. Anything that spreads, incites, promotes or justifies and then there's uh, racial hatred, xenophobia, anti-Semitism. And of course, what we've done recently is expand that out to include religion, disability, gender, age, uh, sexual orientation. This does not make sense. Unless you borrow hatred from there and apply it to all the other things, the person asking the question just asked, don't say speech that is hateful. Uh, the second part of that is that it incites hate um, and often violence. Sort of again uses the word hate, doesn't it? Does anybody want to add to A whole lot less sneaky. Can we trust the tech companies to control hateful content? Of course, AI is always going to be a little bit inhuman. It makes me wonder if the call is anything really other than human-driven selective content removal. I think he may be coming from an angle lamenting whatever it'll be, it'll never be enough. Five months after March 15, a gunman kills 23 people in an anti-Latino attack at a Walmart in Texas. He cites the Christchurch terrorist's Great Replacement Manifesto as inspiration. That was five months, but one week after March 15, 2019, there was another significant event, a little bit relevant, you know, allegedly as retaliation and that for the Christchurch attack, and that whole thing may be dubious, but he just left that one out, skips ahead to find the next one that suits the whole thing he's getting at. Lone actors may attack alone, but they are growing in a global network of hate online. Could happen again. Yes. And, and it, it, it will happen. It will happen again. It's the possibility that there is someone in New Zealand who is going to be influenced by what they see online, who gets sufficiently angry and motivated to do that again. So it only requires one person. And that's a really scary thought. The key issue is the increasing prominence and role of lone actors. At the event where this happened, another speaker was heckled for saying that all forms of terrorism should be condemned. Now, this was seen as intolerant, and I think that may be a byproduct of this culture that some people are cultivating. This oversimplification of hate may well just confuse people lost in a sea of reasonable whataboutisms. Panicked shoppers at an Auckland supermarket. He wounded six people, leaving three in critical condition. A man armed with a bow and arrow killed five people and wounded two others in southern Norway. It happened yesterday in the town of Kongsberg. Before Sir David Amos's meeting with constituents was over, a man had stabbed him multiple times. What about isms? Maybe pushing those already skeptical of mainstream media to the point where they ironically find themselves down various rabbit holes that we're all being warned about. James says he went to far-right extremist website 4chan because he was isolated and lonely. That's how you get conspiracy theorists. You weren't so full of shit yourself. And now my watch begins. I don't think 
hateful terrorists are always necessarily lone actors. And when they are, they probably aren't necessarily motivated by the same things as the Christchurch terrorist was. Some hateful mass killers may not even be motivated by a political agenda at all. And when they claim they are, maybe they're not really. As we've seen in the general population, some people are just... <laughs> when hateful killers do claim a motivation, whether they are aware of it or not, may be a cover for other issues like psychopathy, nihilism, some form of psychosis, or just narcissistic entitlement, maybe. Whatever the motivation, the worst case for them, yeah, outcome wise, they'll be dead, not giving a hoot about anything. Best case, they'll be alive, basking in the notoriety, or in some VIP section of an afterlife, as it's probably a safe bet that if they did believe in some hell of sorts, they don't think that whatever they've doing is going to get them there. How else do they justify the inhumanity they show? Even if you hate your own government or you hate some other government, whether they have a reason or not, it's it's not really justice if they're hurting people that they've never met before. I'm not sure a domestic terrorist ever achieves their desired outcome either. Some opportunists will try to exploit division. This very lady, Thomas Pinawa, was violently removed from to uphold the same agenda that killed people in the mosque. I think most people would probably rather get along. Some terrorists may think that they're playing part in a long game. While I cannot predict the future, I can't imagine Israel is going anywhere. Yeah, good luck with that. Maybe if one shows signs of ideological radicalization, it's a valuable indicator and it can help the authorities preventing bad things. But maybe hate is a little bit more complicated. And this might be a documentary on white supremacy or maybe Islamophobia. Both important issues of our time. Someone should indeed be on them. We now know that the Christchurch terrorists supported Stefan Molyneux. He gave him money. But maybe this documentary is really about something else entirely. YouTube was actually the source of his inspiration. Of all the people who watch things on YouTube, the percentage of them that become mass murderers, grand scheme of things, it may well be some, but it's not its not a lot, is it? This particular journalist may well be a nice person, I don't know, but far too lacking in intellectual curiosity and perhaps too compromised by a personal hang-up to be exploring such a topic as that sort of enigmatic hatred behind mass murder. Everything that I want to do in my career, you know, help inform people, make New Zealand a better place, all these kinds of things, mm -hmm. This next quote is going to be used out of context to put a finer point on things. No, that was a fail. Yeah, I failed. Yes. That took longer than I thought. I do apologise. Well, Heather is here with News Hub weather and not a bad Friday around the country. Yeah, it was warm and relatively calm today. Thanks.